I don't get it, where's the rest of them? Cliffjumper might have good intentions at heart and stand strong with the Autobots, but his paranoia gets the best of him. This brash mini-bot is pretty much the counter to Bumblebee's optimistic attitude. He is a trigger-happy Red Rage warrior who despises the Decepticons with all his might. With his quick speed, eager attitude, and ability to questionably pull out large weapons from who knows where, he may not be easy to work with, but he'll jump into the action. I didn't even realize that I made a pun. Cliffjumper used to resemble a deformed Porsche, and I do see the similarities. Now his form in Earthrise might not resemble any specific vehicle, but it's very close to a certain Mitsubishi, according to a certain car enthusiast with a lazy eyebrow. It doesn't feel custom made or specialized, personally altered, just some typical old car that the principal gearing up for his midlife crisis would drive. Completely coated consistently in a red paint, this little car sets itself in a very realistic setting. Oh, and don't think too short on the term little. Do you get what I'm saying? He's short! Remember when Thrilling 30 started to roll around and Trailbreaker was compared to older generations figures? He was so short and we all complained. Can we have that back? It's more so about the robots since cars and vehicles tend to form different sizes in the alternate mode, so while this may seem like a modified wind charger, the car seems to pack a punch. Painted rims, respectable realistic bumper, backlight separated from the molded outline, and a hood with key attention to detail. Even behind the wheels have some intentional detail. Nice blue tinted windshield reminds me of the GTO figure. Although I'm confused why they went all black for the back. Ah, screw it, I don't know much about cars, all I know is my car goes broom! The large rocket launcher comes into play when you reattach the stand to splay out. It makes room to attach it directly to the top. You could also manage to slide the peg from the hood molded to fit directly into the back, and bring up the arms to get this look. But one, you have to basically unravel the entire car just to get the arms up. Two, why would I destroy this nice car? And three, well, this stupid mirror's off the chart. You could also break it up to form two skis, two rockets, and open the back to form, I don't know, a camping barbecue? This all combines to the car to recreate his water ski mode used in only one Generation 1 episode. And here I thought one-off modes were a masterpiece specialty. I don't care what anyone says about the ridiculousness, impracticality, or how engineering was dedicated to a very quick scene. I love it. The set brings a lot of unique joy to the figure. Yeah, I'd play with it in the bathtub. And now for the best part. You can remove the entire back section to make me scream inside until the demon's ears start bleeding. Why is this becoming the norm? Did they add this to make it seem like you're getting more for your buck? This entire thing parts form off the car to transform, and they make the excuse of calling it a weapon. It's not. It's just a chunk of car meat. This isn't Creo. I wouldn't mind if parts forming was the intended feature, or there was some conversion to try to change it up, but it simply feels like cheating. I like Cliff Jumper, I like the car mode, but this sours the experience of a Transformer. It's like having the windshield of Optimus Prime's chest, and to stop calling it a hack, have the option to put it on the feet. Look kids, it's a surfboard, we're not deceiving you. Rolls fine, even for tabbed in wheels. Speaking of the tabs, it all locks in solidly, but in that, it's tricky to pop it all open to transform. I guess they just don't want you figuring out their little sneaky trick. I'm on to you. That's all to do with the transformation, and while it is certainly a disappointing factor, the alt mode itself is respectful and serviceable to Cliffjumper. It's small, but it feels good to avoid Decepticons and race around. Plus, I can't stay mad with the ski setup anyways. Robot mode. <laughs> time Cliffjumper got ahead of Bumblebee. I mean, it seems like a simple decision to do so, and with Cyberverse and Studio Series, it's not like a plethora of Bumblebee isn't widely available. Bumblebee's gonna catch on with the crowd anyways, and Cliffjumper might not have as good as a chance if the mold was already out. 
it still feels refreshing. This is a spry little Autobot, and yes, I sure do mean little. Look at the size compared to these other deluxe figures, and yet he's at the same price point? He's only slightly taller compared to the old Legends, and without all the accessories, if this even counts, he's also incredibly light. Damn, dude, I feel... I feel... Why am I not mad? Shrimp Jumper is tiny, sure, and the already raised price point really starts to hit. But I think there's enough excuses here to justify it, at least to me. To start, the classes are becoming more of a price point, not a matter of size. There's no Legends class where you could fit in, replaced with the Micromasters. But with the level of engineering going on and weapons, he would exceed the Legends class anyways. The scale still fits with the Generations toys, I would rather he'd be short and fit with the old Legends minibots rather than another GDO cliff jumper. Furthermore, Hoist is still tall enough to counter the issue, and honestly, the size and price isn't far off from some third-party toys. Plus, you're also paying for how damn awesome it is. I love the plump body, little arms with plastic tubes as the upper section, and large boots to stomp around. This doesn't feel like a figure adjusted based on Cliff Jumper. This just feels like Cliff Jumper, even if he is half the bot of everyone else. Too soon? Turn it around and ew, this feels dirty. I know this is parts forming, but just keep it on the back. I don't like it, but we'll call it even, especially if it means it helps hold the sides together, because otherwise you mess with it and it looks like the shoulders exploded. Now that's a face only a mother could love. He's a cutie patootie, I must say. Just don't die this time, and if I catch you entering a dark universe one more time, there's gonna be some words. Oh, I just realized this is my first Shattered Glass figure. There's some interesting transformation tricks, especially with the wheels, and if you feel the head is limited in movement, untap the neck for more head movement. But be careful because the joint is pretty stiff. That head sculpt is pure cliff jumper. Bumblebee might be pretty similar in theme, but you can tell it's got the cliff jumper shape with the horns and half oval shaped helmet. Thank you for not doing the classics again. Did someone say articulation? Ball jointed head, shoulders out and in, forward to back, rotation below, elbow bend, wrist rotation, waist rotation, hips out and in, forward to back, rotation below, knee bend, and foot tilt. It was at this point that this was nothing like a Legends toy. All the joints feel nice, and I love how despite the size, he has wrist rotation. Who saw that coming? Plus, with the big boots, he's so satisfying to pose around. The waist folds back if you want to use it, but if you are, you have to keep the waist straight, but it's more annoying than anything. Let's take a look at the accessories. With everything separated, and yes, even the stupid backpack, you can tab in the skis to the separate cannons and use them as separate blasters. The barbecue can just hang back and with the tab, it plugs onto the shoulder. Everything combines together to form the large rocket launcher he tried to assassinate Megatron with. Pretty sure you don't want to mess with him at this point. Bumble who? With the free hand, you can bring in the backpack and... I can't believe I'm saying this, but the combination with the shield actually doesn't look so bad. You could also plug it to the back end, uh, you ruined it. I managed to get a hammer mode out of it, but I still feel filthy. Please, keep it on the back so I can cleanse my soul. Megatron rocket launcher, because I mean... Megatron rocket launcher. There's blast ports all over this guy, and even with the size, portholes on the feet, side of the legs, hands, side of the arm, and one on the back, even with the pack off. Before anyone asked me to put an Autobot symbol on the chest, or to get the add-on kit, Go Go Gadget Rocket Feet! I understand the concern for the size. It seems Hasbro has been sneaking around, getting away with upping the cost and reducing the size. I think the worry is that people don't want this to be the norm, but if they manage to keep the complex engineering and surround it with figures that average it out, I'm not worried. If you let the small things, pun not intended, worry you, then you're gonna miss out because out of the Wave 1 figures I got, he's one of the very best figures I've gotten. He's so much fun and I'm glad he got the opportunity to step out of the shadow of a yellow bug. It's better if you get it on sale, but there's no regrets I have with picking it up. I guess you could say they're really jumping the cliff with this guy.